to be honest, one of the best parts of the holiday season is SpongeBob. And yeah, I know SpongeBob is also the best part of the summer because he's literally a sea creature in a show about nautical nonsense and crabs. Wait. No, that was a long clip, bro, what the fu- But honestly, Christmas is here, and it's with Spongebob, because when I was a kid, the how to watch a Nickelodeon around this time of year was seeing Next Star singing together, and Spongebob with the OG Christmas Who episode, and the at the time newer Christmas episode, it's a Spongebob Christmas, along with the song Don't Be a Jerk, a Christmas song so good that it rivals Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas Is You, but that's just my opinion, therefore, you should not take it as fast. And it seems like nowadays Nickelodeon realized that Spongebob is just too iconic to just have two Christmas specials because in the past four years Nickelodeon released three more Christmas specials, one of which I'd never seen before. So today in the honor of the holiday season, I'll be ranking all the Spongebob Christmas episodes because I just want to see if the newer ones are just as good as the old ones. Will they have loads my expectations or will they just end up being total shit? Well, let's find out. Christmas Who is not only the first Spongebob Christmas special, it's also the first 30 minute special in the show's history. And as well as debuting characters, and as well as debuting the characters Patchy the Pirate and his pet Potty the Parrot. And to be honest, for his first appearance, Tom Kenny knocks out of the park as Patchy. Patchy is pretty much toast of the special because let's be real, almost every holiday special on the sun has someone telling a story to people through television. With Patchy falling under that category because that's what he does in almost every episode he appears in. And it was getting into shenanigans because he's stupid. But here nothing too crazy happens. He's just at home with his parrot getting ready for the Christmas season while talking about Spongebob's very first Christmas. The story begins with Sandy telling Spongy Boy about Christmas because he doesn't know what Christmas is. And after learning about Christmas, he obviously goes and tells everyone about Christmas and Santa Claus getting them excited for Christmas. So they start decorating and writing letters to Santa Claus. However, Squirt doesn't believe in that shit and doesn't want to write a letter to Santa Claus because he's a grown man. Then when Christmas comes, Santa does not show up, causing everyone in Bikini Bottom to hate Spongebob and to leave him alone. Then Squidward shows up to be a dick to Spongebob, making him feel more like shit, and Spongebob gives him a Christmas gift because he didn't want Squidward to feel left out if Shanta showed up. Squidward then opens the gift and loves it. I feel like a... I feel like a... <laughs> this causes Squidward to realize that he has been a shit, so he decides to dress up as Santa Claus to cheer Spongebob up. And this works a bit too well because everyone somehow thinks that he's Santa, so he gives everyone everything he owns so they can leave him alone. Then after all that happens, the real Santa appears, thanking Squidward for taking care of the Bikini Bottom for him as he fades into the sky saying, Merry Christmas. Yeah, that's where it ends. This episode really has one of Squidward's best moments in the whole show. In one of my previous videos, I talked about one of Squidward's worst moments in the show, Sponge Kano. Just to keep it brief, in that episode, Squidward was an angry shit that is mad at literally everyone. I'm supposed to focus with all that incessant tapping. I don't want your help ever again. Why does everyone insist on making my job so difficult? Cause being your neighbor leaves me with nothing to be grateful for. Your hat annoys me. Squidward, it is imperative that we nothing. You take too long in the restaurant. And when a volcano erupts, a dolphin shows up and accidentally tells the citizens of Bikini Bottom to drop Squidward in the volcano. Then Spongebob shows up the last minute to save Squidward. Then unfortunately Squidward trips and almost falls in. And at this point, he realizes that he's been a shit the whole episode and that he should be more appreciative of his life. Then when he's freed, his house gets thrown into the volcano and he goes back to being a prick and that he lied to Spongebob and everyone in town. But in this episode of Christmas Who, Squidward was only a prick in the beginning. 
with him not believing in Santa Claus, not because he hates Spongebob, but it's just because the concept just sounds too far-fetched to him. He's a grown man, why would he be excited for a fat white guy to break into his house? It's not until Santa is a no-show and he opens Spongebob's gift that he realizes that Spongebob cares. Not only about him, but everyone in Bikini Bottom. And that Spongebob bringing Christmas to Bikini Bottom brought people together. Now seeing everyone turn on him because Santa is a no-show and being given the best gift he ever received, seeing the sponge sad just wasn't right to him anymore. So he decided to cheer up Spongebob and the town so that he won't hate him anymore. And this works. And yeah, on the outside Squidward looks annoyed, but on the inside, he's happy. Which is why I think he plays his current nanny. This moment proves that Squidward cares about the little guy. Well, sometimes it goes a bit too far with Spongebob, but he often realizes that yeah, sure, sometimes Spongebob's annoying. But he still cares about the guy, with Spongebob always showing him love and friendship, and Skirrer just responds to like he responds to everything, with annoyance. And this is how to have a good ending. Take note Sponge Kano, having Squidward revert back to being a prick doesn't solve anything. Other than that, I don't have anything else to say. There's nothing else that I can say about Zelda that no one else has said before. The song very first Christmas slaps, and the ending of Santa always catches me off guard by the end. This is not only one of the best Bum Up Christmas specials, but also one of the best Christmas specials of all time. It's on the same level as Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas for Community and the Christmas Vacation episode of Phineas and Ferb. The first one, not, not the second one. I can't talk to Mr. Krabs like that, Squidward. Oh uh, yes, stop motion. One of my favorite mediums of all time. Yeah, I love watching animated shows like Family Guy and Futurama and live action shows like Community and New Girl, but something about stop motion that always stuck with me. I think stop motion movies and shows look really cool because it looks like toys moving on their own. And that's if the characters aren't made of clay. To this day, I think Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town are one of the best things to ever exist since canned bread. The production of this episode is just interesting to me because it was made by the same people who made a stop motion intro for Truth or Square, Screen Novelties. And that intro sequence was one of the only good parts of that really bad episode. Seeing a whole ass boom episode in that style just hits different. It feels like a dream. In this episode, Patch used to host again because why not? He was in almost every animated special at that point, so it's not really a surprise that he appears here. Patch here reveals to the audience that he stole a mail truck and kidnapped a mailman because he wants to meet Santa Claus. Okay, I didn't realize how morbid that sounds until I just said it. And after him and his parrot potty get into a car crash, the episode starts with Spongebob and everyone else getting ready for the Christmas season, while Poynton is plotting an evil plan to make everyone in the Bikini Bottom naughty so he can look good by comparison. And his plan is that he would go and put jerktonium in some fruit cake and feed it to everyone in town, turning them all into dicks, I mean jerks, with his first victim being Spongebob. And that's victim in air quotes, because when Spongeboy eats the fruitcake, he doesn't become a dick. So Poynton gives up and Spongebob unknowingly drives through the town in a fruitcake cart, giving people the fruitcake, turning them all into boners. Pretty much giving Poynton a victory. And this wasn't the only trick in Poynton's sleeves. Now so Santa can only give him a present, he unleashes Metal Sonic. I mean, Bob, Bob Sponge Chef Pan. I, I, no, I, I, I misread it. I mean, Toy Bob. He wishes Toy Bob to go around the town as SpongeBob destroying shit so Santa can think it was actually SpongeBob the whole time. Bro, Santa's not that stupid. You know, SpongeBob realized that everyone in Bikini Bottom is acting like assholes to each other. So he goes to Sandy for help. And Sandy. <laughs> Well, she looked better. Then when her face of fruitcake gets stuck in Sandy's Christmas machine, it reveals to them that the fruitcake has been loosed with jerktonium. Where'd you get that fruitcake anyway? From Plankton. He baked it. You're an idiot. Uh-huh. It's also revealed the reason why the possibly lethal doses of jerktonium don't affect SpongeBob is because he mostly has a heart in a very little brain. AKA, he's just too pure. 
Then Santi's Christmas Machine produces a sheet of the song Don't Be a Jerk. With Spongebob realizing that the song could cure the toxic jerkiness, Spongebob sings the song in an amazing ass musical number and removes the jerktonium from everyone except for Gridward. Then Santa shows up and surprise surprise, he thinks everyone including Spongebob, because again Toy Bob is going around destroying shit, is naughty. So it looks like Plankton will get the Krabby Patty formula. Hell Santa was literally ready to hand it to him. Well that was until Toy Bob showed up because again, he's just going around destroying random shit. So Toy Bob decides that he wants to destroy Santa because again, he is naughty. Please don't take this out of context. Then the real Spongebob gets on the fruit cart to save Santa. And after Spongebob succeeds, Santa realizes that the Spongebob robot is not the real Spongebob. Gee, you think? You also find out that it was Poynton's robot and gives him a shit ton of coal as an apology to everyone in Bikini Bottom. And the episode ends like the last one with Santa and his reindeer flying away. But this time, Patrick tries to kidnap Santa because that was the episode's B-plot. Now back to the Patchy segments. Patchy and Potty get stuck in the middle of nowhere with nothing to eat, causing them to want to eat each other. Then after a cold night, Patchy starts to hallucinate and mistakes a polar bear for Santa Claus. Then when he realizes that, the polar bear chases him as Potty and Santa laugh at his karma as the episode ends. Like Christmas Who, I have nothing but good things to say about this episode. I really like the stop motion and the soundtrack. Christmas Who only had like one song, but before the special came out, the show only had two Christmas songs for the fans to enjoy because in 2009, the song Don't Be a Jerk released as a bonus track on the Spongebob Greatest Hits compilation album. And the episode as a whole was based on the song, which is nothing new when it comes to Christmas specials. But my only criticism here is the characterization of Squidward and Patrick. Again, Squidward is an adult. Why have him put lights in his house telling Santa to go away, despite him not doing that in Christmas Who? I know it's just for a song, but that's a bit too extra, even for Squidward. To me at least, Squidward is a bit more grumpier here. I think it's because no one in the main cast likes him enough to celebrate Christmas with him other than Spongebob, so I can excuse Squidward, but Patrick? I just can't. Even without the Jerktonium, he's a prick. Again, this guy literally tries to kidnap Santa, and with the Jerktonium, he's just angrier and that's it. He's just a little man-child trying to kidnap an old white man. Other than that, I really enjoyed this episode, and it's just as good as Christmas Who. I don't want to be an elf. I want to be a fry cook. A fry cook? SpongeBob wants to be a fry cook. SpongeBob wants to be a fry cook. Who's SpongeBob? Tell me! This is Boomerang from Cartoon Network. We now return to Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Coons on the Moon isn't technically a Christmas episode, but Santa appears here, so we're talking about it. In this episode, Sandy takes Spongebob, Pearl, and Squidina to the moon for a Girl Scout trip. I know it's not Girl Scouts, but what else am I supposed to call this? Also, Squidward's there too because Spongebob ordered Krabby Patties, and man, I feel sorry for Squidward in this episode. Man's just trying to deliver Krabby Patties, and then he gets shipped to the moon and sees shit that would not only scar him, but the viewers at home. Plus Roger. That is literally the funniest moment in the entire episode. It honestly reminds me of the time when Tom Kenny appeared in the Neptune's Spatula episode. Behold! 
this mode just gives me a similar vibe. Anyways, after some mood trip shenanigans, Sandy and her crew find Squidward and Santa Claus. I don't know why, but they found Santa Claus. And it turns out that Santa takes naps on the moon because why not? Also, before that happens, Bumble accidentally moves the moon away from its orbit because Sandy put the launch button next to the launch button. For a lady that built an underwater tree dome, a submarine, and a hotel resort on an abandoned island, how does she not know how weird it is to put the launch button next to the launch button, knowing that Sponge Boy Me Bob might it up. Then after some trial and error, Spongebob has an idea, with that idea being him becoming the moon. I wish I was making this up. They literally went and turned Spongebob into the moon. You can take the moon, you can take the sun. The Spongebob moon. Earth is pissed and Spongebob wishes us a merry early Christmas as the episode ends. This ending best summarizes this episode as a big what the f moment. At first glance, this seemed a bit similar to Mooncation. Then when I saw Santa Claus, I realized something. This was probably a last minute rewrite. At that point in time, Is It Spongebob Christmas came out in 2012, six years. And Christmas Who came out 12 years before It's a Spongebob Christmas. Which is different for the Halloween slash spooky themed episode because they wouldn't have long gaps between seasons. So shooting in Santa Claus and Goodnight Moon makes sense if this was the case. I don't know for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised because the utter mid specials that Nickelodeon forced the crew to push out. Hell, Despite Santa Claus not appearing until halfway through the episode, this episode was promoted as Space Bob Mary Pants. Yeah, this shit was promoted as a Christmas episode, even though in reality Santa just appears halfway through for like a couple minutes and that's it. This episode doesn't feel like Christmas. It feels like that one episode of Phoenix and Fur where Santa Claus makes a cameo, but if he was an asshole because the Santa Claus in this episode is a prick. Who really laughs at Spongebob Pearl and Squidina trying to get the moon back into orbit. Plus, I also hate the new voice he has. I haven't really mentioned this while talking about the Spongebob Christmas, but they changed the actor for Santa, from him being played by writer and storyboard artist Mike Bell, to being voiced by famous actor John Goodman. Honestly, I didn't give a shit about this change because at that time, it had been years since Santa appeared in an episode of Spongebob, and John Goodman is a well-known actor. He appeared in season 3 Cutie as the Dean of the Air Conditioning Prepare School, and he voiced Sully in Monsters Inc. But as for a new guy who's black, his Santa's fine, I guess. But I just hate how he's just shoehorned into the story. One thing to point out before we move on this episode marks the first appearance of Patrick's adopted sister Squidina before her debut in a spinoff, The Patrick Star Show. Yeah, Patrick's little sister's first appearance was in this shit. That, that's an insignificant fact, I guess. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're finally starting with the ones that i never seen before. Obviously as a little boy I saw both Christmas Who and This Is Spongebob Christmas on repeat when I was little. But as for Goons on the Moon, I saw that while I was at the gym in high school. I'm not kidding. That's how I saw that episode. Pretty much in this episode, Point then tries to get rid of his old chum before getting fined by the health inspector. And while trying to get rid of the old chum, he runs into Spongebob and he tells him that it's new chum so he can leave Pointon alone. Then Spongebob asks more questions causing Pointon to lie, with that lie being that it's chum day. And you guys probably be wondering, what is chum day? Well, um... It's Christmas, but with chum. Meaning that instead of presents and snow, people will get chum. Then Spongebob decides to help Poison hide all the old chum in people's homes. Then Spongebob realizes that he wants to hide a piece of chum for Poynton to surprise him, and he unknowingly causes the rest of Poynton's old chum to be unleashed into the bikini bottom like snow. At first, everyone's pissed at Poynton because it's chum, but then when they see Spongebob and the children playing the chum, they realize that playing in chum can be fun, and now everyone loves chum day. Except for the health inspector. And now he gets this point in two choices to either pay a fine of one billion dollars or to eat all of the damn chum and obviously point in chose the latter and ate all the chum 
DN. This episode is funny as hell. I didn't expect to enjoy this episode as much as I have. At first, I thought it was gonna be like Goons on the Moon, but no, this shit is actually good. I honestly really like the humor in this episode. I feel like it's a postseason 9 thing, but the humor is really weird and wacky, and I forever loved this episode for it. Plus, seeing Fat Plankton is the funniest thing I ever seen. What day is today? Today? Yes, today. What is today? Why? It's Tom Day! Then I haven't missed it! Wait a minute. Tom Day! That's disgusting! In this episode, it's finally Christmas after two Christmas specials that don't take place during Christmas. Spumba has a gift for Santa and puts it under his tree so he can receive it. But unfortunately, Santa doesn't see it and leaves it behind. And then many months later, Spumba finds it. With the help of Patrick and Poynton, they travel to the North Pole to give Santa his gift. Well, they try to, because of this being Spumba and Patrick, they end up in an old abandoned Christmas theme park in Encino. And here they meet up with Patchy the Pirate and Potty the Parry. Patchy gives them a map that eventually leads them to the North Pole. Now at the North Pole, Poynton goes off the evil shit because he's an evil guy while Spawn and Patrick try to get to Santa. Unfortunately for them, Santa is on vacation and the elves won't let them in, causing them to break into Santa's workshop to put the present under the tree. But then the elves look at them and think that Spongebob and Patrick are gonna steal presents. So they decide to throw walks at them and this gets the attention of the buff reindeer and then the reindeer and the elves start to fight each other because the elves are assholes. Santa shows up confused on why the reindeer and the elves are fighting each other. Then Spongebob explains why he's in the North Pole in the first place and hands Santa's gift. With that being a letter to Santa thanking him for being Santa, which is a bit stupid because he could have just mailed it to Santa. But honestly, it's just really sweet and wholesome. Santa thanks SpongeBob in the next Christmas. Spomo gets pointed a photo of him, Patrick, and Patchy from when they were traveling to the North Pole. Then with inspiration from that photo, Pointing goes on a killing spree. The end. No, seriously, that's literally the end. I just love Spongebob in this episode. He's just so innocent here, like in Poynton's old chum in Christmas Who. But as for Patrick, he's, he's fine, I guess. Poynton is just there. The only reason why he's here is so he can put himself on the nice list. Wait, doesn't that bitch check that shit twice? The way he gets cold to power his kill robot in the end using his naughty status to his advantage. Honestly, I really hated the elves, specifically the blonde one. When she meets Spongebob and Patrick, she comes up as a bit of an ass. She literally thought that Spongebob and Patrick were just some kids trick-or-treating, even though they're literally the size of kitchen products. Plus, Louis Black does a better job as Santa Claus here, probably because the writers didn't make him an asshole. Also, the buff reindeer chasing Poynton around is just hilarious. <laughs> Overall, this is a good episode, but it's not as iconic as Christmas Who, and it's a small like Christmas in my opinion. I think only time will tell if this episode will ever become iconic in the eyes of the internet. Looks like Santa's gone all in for automation. Now to start the ranking, ranking the episodes from worst to best. Obviously, that's how it works. If I rate the best to worst, it wouldn't feel right. To first off this ranking, we have Goons on the Moon because it's Goons on the Moon. It's the worst. It sucks. Santa Claus appears halfway through again. That episode sucks. Then I put Road to Christmas next to Goons on the Moon because it's better than Goons on the Moon, but it's a bit mid. Then there's Poynton's old chum because again, chum day. But for the last two, it was a bit tricky. Again, I loved watching both specials when I was a little boy, so choosing one over the other was hard for me. So don't be mad, because I put Christmas Who under it to Spongebob Christmas. Again, Christmas Who is an iconic episode, but there's something about Spongebob Christmas that makes me like it better. It has more songs, beautiful stop motion, plus the episode has an album. A f album. Sorry not sorry, fellow Spongebob fans. Thank you all so much for getting my recent videos, over 100 views. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it that you guys just keep coming back to my channel to just watch these videos, even though I upload like once a month. It's at this time, this is the second video. And I am pretty sure this came out after Christmas. 
if for some reason you want to rank these episodes yourself because you think I'm wrong, do it in the comments. I mean, honestly want to know if I'm wrong or not. Should I give Roll the Christmas a second chance or am I right? This has been Alberto and Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, and Happy New Year.